It's getting to be uh, just after two, so we want to go ahead and get started. Uh, momentarily, I'll introduce Sheriff Deloach, who will be conducting this, uh, the press briefing. But before I do, uh, I think it's very important that we recognize that this was certainly an operation that took multiple agencies to pull together. This time, I'd like to announce our partner, oper our partner agencies and ask that a representative from each of those agencies, if you'd like, please come forward and uh, join the sheriff um, as he announces the results of this operation. First, the Palaka Police Department. St. John's County Sheriff's Office, Clay County Sheriff's Office, Orange Park Police Department, Tallahassee Police Department, Gainesville Police Department. I got those in backwards order. Gainesville should always been come before Tallahassee, but we'll leave that up for debate. Uh, Alachua County Sheriff, Flagler County Sheriff, United States Department of Homeland Security, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, and the State Attorney's Office 7th Judicial Circuit. Also, operations like this would not be possible without the support of our county. And so at this time, I'd like to ask the uh, any county commissioners and the county administrator if you'd like to come forward and join the sheriff as he announces this operation. And finally, any other members that are with us today that were uh, um, key to this investigation or took part in this uh, operation, please feel free if you would like to come stand with the sheriff. Okay, at this time, uh, Sheriff Gator DeLoach. Good afternoon. Just to echo what Colonel Wells said, I want to take an opportunity to thank not only our partner agencies, but also our county commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Goddard, if you would uh, please join us up at the podium here. I'd also like to take an opportunity to invite those members that are sitting in the audience that took an active role or participated in this investigation in any way to include any of our partners from surrounding agencies. We'd love for you to, uh, to join us up here as well. Teresa. Oh, you're doing front and center. Come up here. <laughs> Everyone you see standing here before you today took an active role in this operation. Come on, Dom, I see you standing in the back back there. Come on up. No, one, no one's exempt here. As I was saying, everyone standing with me here behind the podium took an active role in this investigation. But there's one unsung hero here who approached me six to eight months ago with what I thought at the time was a harebrained idea to conduct an operation of such magnitude in Putnam County. And while I admit I was extremely excited about it, I also ex approached the operation with much trepidation because I knew all the time, effort, and planning that would have to go into this type of operation. You can see behind you there is a multitude of people gathered behind me, and had it not been for all of these hands working together, this operation would have never came together the way that it did. I'm pleased to announce that today marks the completion of Operation Be Mine. This operation was an undercover operation targeting adults who prey upon children using social media and other forms of online communication. During this operation, which began in early February, 14 adult men either traveled with the intent to have sex with a minor or solicited a minor over the internet for sexual performance. These men range in age from 18 to 63 years old and traveled from as far north as Madison, Florida and as far south as Orlando, Florida. 
During this operation, many of the suspects traveled to an undisclosed location, hoping to have sex with a minor between the ages of 11 and 14 years old. Instead, they were abruptly met at the door by members of the Putnam County Sheriff's Office SWAT team who abruptly ended what they had hoped would be a pleasurable evening for them. Of the 14 suspects arrested, only one was from Putnam County. As I'd said before, there were 14 total involved in the operation, but a couple of note that come to mind that I want to mention. The first of which is Gary Sims, who is an inmate in a Florida Department of Corrections facility, uh, South Bay Corrections uh, facility in uh, Southern Florida, who was able to obtain a cell phone and transmit messages including photographs of his genitalia to an undercover detective. Additionally, of note on our list of suspects is Brandon Riggs. Brandon traveled from uh, the Trenton area, was a member of the Florida National Guard, and was previously employed by the Florida Department of Corrections. I think the takeaway from this is that we all need to go home and remind ourselves as parents to always ensure that our children are being safe whenever they're on the internet. And as parents, it's our obligation to ensure that we know what activities they're participating in, that we constantly monitor their activities online, that we know their account usernames and passwords, and it's time to have an honest and candid conversation with each of our children about not disclosing who they are on the internet, sharing personal information, dates of birth, phone number, addresses, or any other means of identifying themselves because at the end of the day, what they have to realize is they never know who they're talking to on the other end of that computer. Again, it's my distinct pleasure to stand up here with all of our partners. I'd like to give Mr. R.J. Larizza an opportunity to comment on the operation as well. Thank you. Good afternoon. Well, I guess it's obvious that uh, there's no shortage of sexual deviant behavior uh, in the Seventh Circuit and beyond, in the state of Florida and around the country. Um, it's good that we're able to get these folks before they commit any additional crimes. In other words, before they're able to actually victimize someone physically. That's the beauty of these operations. And they're made possible by folks like Sheriff DeLoach and the Putnam County Sheriff's Office, ICAC, which is the Internet Crimes Against Children outfit that really uh, pioneered these investigations and has brought them to the forefront of our fight against folks that would prey upon our children. I can tell you this as well, that we appreciate uh, all the efforts of uh, the office of the state attorney with uh, the sheriff's office, with all the other folks who worked on this, and we look forward to prosecuting these cases and hopefully removing these folks from, uh, from our communities so that they won't be able to victimize anybody else. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Larissa. As far as I'm concerned, as law enforcement officers, we have no greater mission than to protect the safety of our citizens that entrust us with their care. And certainly not lost in that is that most importantly, we have an obligation to protect our most vulnerable of our population, which is our children, from attackers that would prey on them in such a manner. And last but not least, I hope this leaves an indelible mark upon those who have committed these crimes and aspire to commit crimes like these, that this will not be tolerated in Putnam County, and I hope it puts us on the map 
as an area that will not tolerate this type of nonsense, this type of criminal behavior. We do not welcome you here. Stay away. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Sheriff, were you bothered to know that any of these people would come forward when they believe they're going to meet an 11 and 14 year old? Does that bother you that they're taking the detectives up on this offer, not realizing it is, it is what it is? It, it, it makes me sick and, and turns my stomach, quite frankly, just to think about it. I'm sad to say that I don't believe we have even scratched the surface with regard to internet crimes that are committed against children. And no, unfortunately, I was not surprised. I have some intimate knowledge of some other operations that were uh, conducted in other counties recently uh, that had uh, similar results. And I find that very troubling. It was, it was a residential home within Putnam County. And is there video of this? There is video footage of this, yes. Is it releasable Not at this time because the cases are currently under prosecution. What was the reaction of some of these people when they show up and find the SWAT team instead of a child? I think the videos speak for themselves, and I look forward to a day that we can release those to you. No, as I said, uh, there was only one particular individual from Putnam County who was uh, charged in this operation. We knew that uh, from some intelligence that we'd gathered that there were children who were communicating uh, in Putnam County in some of these online chat rooms, and quite frankly, I was disturbed about that. So when uh, Detective Owens actually approached me with this idea, I, uh, I embraced it. Were the children on the chat rooms I think it starts out as a benign chat, and then uh, those who intend to target children uh, oftentimes uh, guide or coach the conversation in the direction they want it to go. Is this something you work with local youth on as far as if they're becoming exposed to this type of thing? Absolutely. We're, uh, we're working now to put together some information that we can release to some of our local unfortunately, elementary, middle, and high school students about uh, raising awareness of online uh, safety and security. And were any children that you know of uh, injured in this prior to your investigation starting? No, none, none that I'm aware of. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, say that again, please. Sure. You know, we, we, we realize that we live in a small, fiscally constrained county, uh, but we, we also realize the benefit of partnering with agencies uh, like you see represented behind you here, and that's why we are a stakeholder and member of the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force to be able to provide us with the additional resources that we don't have on hand to be able to conduct an operation of this magnitude. Can you mention some of the best the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and the Internet Crimes Against Children uh, specifically, uh, they have a, a wealth of knowledge with regard to conducting these operations and are really the, uh, the experts in the field. While I can't attribute any of these cases to a, a, a direct nexus to human trafficking, I think that, cert that possibility certainly exists. I, I don't have that information readily available. We can certainly provide it to you, though. Did any of these suspects try to mask their age? Did they act like they were younger kids themselves, or did they just come straight out and tell what the intent was? 
Well, I think the majority of them tried to not only mask their age, but also their identity. Possibly, yes. Any additional questions? Our Putnam County one, he's 18 years old and wants to go to the students. Is he college or is he public school or what public school does he attend? He is a public school student and I believe he attends Interlochen High School. Any additional questions? All right, thank you all for your time.